this uh, man has done many things, but I'll just give you a simple, a little summary of who he is. I particularly appreciate him. He is on the board of very many organizations, a board of directors for the Royal Cross Methodist Hospital in Abia State, and um, is the chairman Virgin Forest Energy Limited. He, is, he attended several courses, including the Harvard Business School, Boston. He has also attended the IESE Business School, University of Navarra, in Barcelona, Spain, Wharton Business School, University of Pennsylvania, in Philadelphia, the USA. And um, in fact, some people refer to him as the business school on the Nancy show. Because when he comes on the show, he does not just come with talking or motivation. He gives you the facts, and he actually scares you. But at the end of it, he provides some solution uh, to the problems that we have. Every little solution, one time, one day at a time. So distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, for the next presentation, which will largely focus on uh, moving, navigating, understanding the challenges that we are faced with and how to survive, is the founder and group managing director of Cowrie Asset Management Limited, chairman Fidelity Pension Managers Limited, and chairman Virgin Forest Energy Limited. Let's welcome Mr. Johnson Chuku. In fact, let me correctly say Chief Johnson Chuku. Please put your hands together for him. Thank you very much, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. I believe even without the mic, my voice is loud enough. <laughs> so, um, Nancy, you're looking for trouble. Though. You were ch a mid chief before I was became a, before I became a chief. So it's now a high chief. And unfortunately for me, uh, I betted with my wife that uh, Nancy is a high chief. My wife said Nancy can't be a high chief. So we now put money down and we called her. And she said, it's only the quiz that a high chief. She's a, she's a chief, but she's not a high chief. So I lost my bet. Okay, once again, thank you all. Um, we're going to take it from where Fifi, Fifi, um, where is he? Ah, I was afraid whether you've gone out or. Good job, very good job. Um, The guy did an excellent job, and I'm happy he spoke with young people so that you know that the potential is inside, in, in, inside of you and you have the capacity to realize it fully. Um, I'm going to call it from a different perspective. What I would say we should add to what he has said to you, not a suppression of what he has said to you. Because I'm, as an older person, and I'm going to bring that age wisdom into the challenges of the environment. You know, um, I, I can remember one of the things I said um, when I was a young man and I, I was an undergraduate. And uh, I was a University of Lagos student then. And the super egos lost a match that was paining all of us. And I was so angry. And you can imagine a guy who was like um, 20. And I said, look, if you, put, if you wear me the national color, that I would go and fight Tyson. And Tyson was his prime then. So that's the energy and the zeal and the passion of a young man and a young woman. But we're going to moderate with the realities of the environment. So I'm going to talk to you guys about managing your economic, personal economies in a, in a depressed economy or in a difficult environment like ours. So, and I'm going to talk to you guys how do you navigate religious economic conditions? I will try to compress everything within the next 30 minutes or 25 minutes. And one of the things I realized is that individuals, your economic being, your economic welfare, your economic status is a product of the environment where you operate. And I give you a live example of what happened today. We've been in darkness for the past 30 minutes or thereabouts. 
because we live in Nigeria, we live in Abuja. If we live in England, it's an aberration. It will, it will make the front page of the newspapers tomorrow. Is that not so? But all the media house here won't even report it because it's not an issue. But we lost 30 minutes of our time. All of us collectively lost 30 minutes. If you look at the man I've lost in the past 30 minutes, it is huge. If I had to beg Nancy, we have to compress the time to recover the time we lost. So that's the reality of what we are, where we are as a people. So um, uh, we're not going to talk. So in effect, what's the relationship between a national and individual world? And I say that it, the economic fortune of a nation has a direct relationship with the wealth of her citizens. And I, kept, I went, went further to say individual wealth is created from employment and investment activities. And both are products of opportunity within the environment. I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. That the wealth of individuals is the direct function of the wealth of the society where you live. Because you get your weight, you draw your weight either from employment income or from investment income. Whether you are an innovator, because you have intellectual investment. Do you get what I'm saying? And to drive it home, today, the richest man in Nigeria is Dangote. Is that correct? Dangote's net worth is $12.7 billion. Dangote's net worth is $12.7 billion because Dangote was born and brought up in an economy whose size is $432 billion. Then when a country like Chad cannot produce a Dangote because Chad's total GDP is $10.13 billion. So Dangote is richer than the country called Chad. Mali has a GDP of $17 billion. They cannot produce a Dangote. Do you get what I'm saying? Elon Musk was born in Pretoria in June 1971. Elon Musk is the richest person on earth. His net worth is $273 billion. South Africa's GDP is $301 billion. If Elon Musk had remained in South Africa, he couldn't have been the richest man on earth. Are we together? So, and that's why I'm going to talk, present, take it from two perspectives. One, what do we need to do, or what does the environment need to do for us, for us to be prosperous? And then, what do we need to do as individuals to be prosperous? So it's not just, and you know, like I said, my good young friend here did an excellent job. He has told us we can walk on water, which is true. But the water you must walk must be frozen. If it's not frozen, you can't walk on it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It has to be frozen. And that's where the environment comes. Because it's only when you live in a, 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 in a temperate climate that the water will be frozen. Am I making sense to you? There's no river here that's frozen. If you go to places like Scandinavian countries, during the winter, the water is frozen. You can walk on it. So we're going to be discussing here how do we make our water to be frozen so that we can work on it. So we're going to look at our economy. Why is it that we are poor? And we're going to ask ourselves, is it, is it a, nat a natural thing or by nurture? Is it because we are, we are born into it, it's so, it has been so made by God, or because there are certain things one, our environment has not done for us, and two, we have done for, done for ourselves. I'm happy that FIFA banks has told us a lot of things what we have to do for ourselves. So I'm going to be taking about more on what this environment has to do for us. And I'm going to talk to us how the Nigerian economy has fared the past 10 years. Because that is why many of us are going through difficulties. I've talked to us. Elon Musk was born in South Africa, June 28, 1971. South Africa, the entire size of everything produced in South Africa today is only worth $301 billion. That man alone is worth $273 billion. 
So there's no way he would have been richer than South Africa. It wasn't possible. So he had to go to an environment where there's enough economic activities as to create that level of wealth he has created. Of course, for those of us who are Christians, you know God told Abraham to leave his and so, so let's look at why we are where we are today. Like I said, I'm going to compress this and just talk about briefly about what has brought us to where we are. Because economic opportunities in this country have been diminishing. And that is why a lot of young Nigerians, entrepreneurs as you are, are not able to realize yourself. And I'll give you an instance. When I was born, the opportunities we had in this economy was far more than what it is now. But we have, we as a people can recreate those things. The global economic opportunity in the world has actually multiplied more, several times than what it was in the 70s. But our own opportunity has shrunk because of the decision we've taken as a people. And when I talk of the decision we've taken as a people, it is twofold. Those we put in position of authority and those of us who put them in position of authority. Because if we put the wrong people in position of authority, they will give us garbage in, garbage out. So, I don't need to talk about this. These are figures. These are how the economy has fared in the past 10 years. In 2013, this economy was greater than 5.4%. 2014, 6.2%. It is not a report card on the government, but it's a fact of the matter. We witnessed two recessions in 2016 and 2020. I should use the mic. Can you hear me better now? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. So we've seen two recessions in the past seven years. And when the economy goes into recession, it simply means the value of goods and services produced in that economy has shrunk. Do you get what I'm saying? And when the value of goods and services in the present economy shrinks, it means that the per capita income of the citizens declines. So even with your best effort, you are not able to generate on average basis. And I need to find on average basis, you are not able to generate the same level of productive activity that you used to generate, which means your wealth has weakened. And economic growth and economic success or failure are simply a fact of the decisions the people take. So it is not a nature thing. It is a nurture thing. I've heard people who say, look, I have five kids. All the five kids are stubborn. They are, they are, I don't know what I've done to God. I said, it is you that have refused to train your children well. So it is us as a people that have made our economy to be in this situation. So why is it that Nigerians are feeling the pain? It's because even for those who are employed, the value of your money has continued to erode. In, 20, in, in, in 2013, the inflation rate was just basically 6.4%. But today, as at the end of for the month of August, we're on 20.5%. What that means is that for every average Nigerian, your income has been eroded. It then means, if you, for you to interpret what has happened in August, simply means if you were any 100,000 Naira August last year, and you are still any 100,000 Naira today, what you are now earning is 80,000 Naira. Do you get what I'm saying? And these things are not nature. It's because of the decision we've taken as a people. And sometimes they say, global economy, every, there is inflation everywhere in the world. I say, that's true. But all you producing countries are having deflation. I mean, disinflation. Angola has seen a material reduction in the inflationary rate. Reason is this. The Angolan quasar has appreciated by more than 30 percent between January this year and now. In January, the Angolan Quasar was about 600 
kwaza to a dollar. As at yesterday, it was 422 kwaza to a dollar because they are producing oil. And we used to be the largest oil producer. And the fact that we're not producing oil is not because nature has done anything wrong with us, because we took wrong decisions. And we've not addressed some of the failings and weakness of the economy and the society. That's why we can't produce crude. So for an average family, what impacts most to you on you is your food inflation. Because like one of us said here, the CPI, the consumer price index, the basket is about 452% on food. An average household, because we're not yet rich people, spend most of their income feeding themselves. Food inflation in August was 23.12%. Depending on what you eat, you will realize that most of more than 23 points. But like I said, I don't have so much time. And we are part of the global... Are you, whatever you do, you can't wish it away. You can't wish away consuming foreign made goods. I'm happy with my sister from Central Bank said, the more Nigerian made items we consume, the stronger the currency, the stronger our reserve, the less pressure on our reserve. That's a fact. But we can't run away from consuming foreign goods. All of us are using phones, is that right? All of us are, have smartphones, is that right? So all of us have data. Data is not produced anywhere in Nigeria. Do you get what I'm saying? So whether you like it or not, you are buying data, so somebody has to pay for it with foreign currency. Many of you do Zoom meetings. If you are on a commercial Zoom, you are paying for it. Even in your personal consumption, you can't say everything you eat and take and wear are all made in Nigeria. You don't, nobody's producing television in the country. Is that not so? Are you not going to use television? We are 215 million people, so there are certain minimum foreign exchange demand we will incur. So that's a fact. But what has happened? Our production of or energy from foreign uh, exports has declined. Well, our, our population has continued to increase. So what that means is the population keeps increasing, our demand for foreign exchange will increase by virtue of size. And unless we are productive enough, and being productive enough is a matter of choice that the policymakers must make. And like I said, we have proof of concepts. Nigeria used to be a net importer of cement. Policy decision of the government made Nigeria to be a net exporter of cement. Is that correct? Limestone was here before man was created. It has always been there when we were importing cement. But government said, we have this limestone. We have to mine it. We have to make it an economic sector. In our own time, we had the time when total number of active lines in the country was 445,000. That total number of active telephone lines were 445,000 lines. Policy decision allowed licenses to be done transparently. NCC was set up, it was a policy. Is that correct? Auction of licenses we are done, policy. Today, we have one of the highest penetration of telecommunication service in the, in the world. Policy. So, where we are today is a choice that we use our hand to inflict on ourselves. But in any case, that's why you are seeing your currency. In 2013, a dollar had officially was 157 naira to a dollar. Today, last year, average was 410 dollars. I think currently, CBN would be me with this about 433 dollars. That's official, official exchange rate. Parallel market. So, and I keep saying it is not, this is not because, it ha, it's not happening to God because we are, we are black people. It's because it's happening to us because we are taking the wrong decisions. So, and why I'm sharing this is because these are what is talking on your income. This is what is talking on your wealth. This is what is making you poor. 
And I want to tell it from two perspectives. What do we need to do at the corporate level? At the corporate level, I talk about corporate level, I mean as a people, as a nation, to change our economic fortune. And then what do we need to do as individuals to change our economic fortune? Okay. This just tell you the unemployment rate. Q4, December 2014, unemployment rate was 6.41%. Only 6.14% of Nigerians were unemployed. Today, as at last time when MBS refused to bring for that data, the last data they brought was Q4 2020, almost two years ago, unemployment was 33.28%. I don't want to accuse them that they don't want to publish the figures, but let's assume that they've gathered all data on everything they do, but they refuse to get the data on unemployment. But 33% of Nigerians were unemployed as of December last year. Every Nigerian household is carrying the burden of unemployment. It's very simple. The fact that your relation will demand on you who should be working on any income, it simply means your income is now being distributed to more than one way who should benefit from it. If all of us are employed, our individual and quality will be richer. Then also, why are we not employed? Because poorly choices by leaders has created an economic environment that is difficult for businesses to thrive. Imagine what we've gone through here in the past 30 minutes, waiting for light to come back. Well, this will show you the implications of wrong economic or weak economic uh, performance. Your life expectancy has remained one of the lowest in Africa. In average, those of us who are more than 52 years are living on extra time. <laughs> We're living on extra time. But those who are living in, in Thailand, China, in China, when they see people like me, they say, you're a small boy because you have so many years to live. But here, I'm an Agbalagba because I'm living on extra time. Because our economy is weak, it doesn't present opportunities, your human uh, development index is low. So, in effect, we as Nigerians are struggling against unfavorable climate, uh, environmental factors. And that's why I said I was quite happy with what my young friend Fife said. So that you will know that you have to keep struggling. You know, you have to keep struggling. I tell my friend that. When they see me jumping around, I say, look, at your age, you are still jumping around. I say, I have to jump around. You know why? We are on a treadmill. Have you ever been on a treadmill? When you are on a treadmill, you are running. You are running, sweating. You are not moving anywhere. But if you just stop small, you fall off. So that's where we are. So you have to keep running to at least at the minimum maintain your current standing. For those who are paying employment, your salary has remained... 30,000 uh, naira per uh, uh, minimum salary. For the past four years, we talked about what has happened to the exchange, we talked about what has happened to inflation. So, head or tail, your standard of living has deteriorated. We're going to talk about, like I said, what we need to do about these things. Okay. Um, of course, you know what's happening to the government, they keep accumulating debt. We are 41 uh, trillion as at the end of March. 100 billion dollars is what the Nigeria owes. Um, like I said, I'm not going to talk about so much of this. is the, uh, the fact that we keep spending more than we are generating. And this has, like, all these things are not, they are not imposed by nature. They are choices we've made as a people in determining who leads us. And I want to tell you, young people, you have an opportunity to remake that decision. Okay, I'm going to go straight to what I call the myth of the fact. Of course, you know, um, Nigeria in a wrong company. Like I said, uh, I was under told Nancy we need to make this brief so that we can sustain the attention of young people. And I say Nigeria in young people. In 2018, in 2018, um, um, of the, of, in 2015, of the world's 736 million extreme poor in 2015, 368 million of them, or half of the total, lived in just five countries. We are in part of that company. 
105 countries. The five countries with the highest number of Eastern poor are in descending order. India, top the rank. Followed by who? Followed by Congo Democratic Republic and followed by Ethiopia and Bangladesh. That was in 2015. Fast forward. This year is what? 2022. This graph has changed. Some of those we are, that we are telling that your hand looks like a spirit, they are the ones looking, telling us that you are a spirit. <laughs> India is now second. Nigeria has overtaken India. Bangladesh and Ethiopia has exited the Eastern poor. So why am I saying this? Because we need to realize that our situation was imposed on us by the decision we've taken in our certain leadership. So no matter how motivated you are, you have to contend with those factors. If we like, we can start jumping up here. If they're taking light, they're taking light. Is that also? So what we need to do is to put a system in place that light will never go. So I'm going to bring us to today's figures. After two days ago, I'm going to show you the population of these countries that we are ranked as among the poorest in the world. India was leading. India is understandable because you are doing head count because India and then had a population of 1.3 billion. Today, India has a population of 1.4 billion. But where are we? And how are we taking people out of poverty? Now, let's look at Nigeria. As of two days ago, 69.9 million Nigerians were living in abject poverty, living on less than $1.9 a day. How much is two dollars? Two dollars parallel market rate, one thousand four hundred, is that right? We are saying that seventy million Nigerians cannot earn up to one thousand four hundred naira a day. But the painful thing is this that every minute two point three Nigerians go into extreme poverty. Do you get what I'm saying? For every minute that passes, boom, every 60 seconds, 2.3 Nigerians additionally become extremely poor, can no longer earn 1,400 naira. Let's look at our fellow laggards, Congo DRC. They have, the, they have the second list. But you, probably you need to look at this. That the population, as of two days ago, by what poverty clock was 215 million. Congo has a population of 93 million. They have 68.2 million people in abject poverty. Congo, every minute, push 0.3 people into poverty. We are pushing 2.3 persons into poverty every minute. Now, look at, let's look at, um, okay, let's look at India. India has a population of 1.4 billion people. The number of extremely poor in India is 51 million. India has a population of seven times Nigeria's population. 51 million of them are in abject poverty. We have 215 million people, 70 million of us are in abject poverty. Only 4% of Indians are in poverty. But that's not the good news only. The good news only for India is that every second, 0.3 person live poverty in India. For every second, boom, you know what second is? Boom, 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 eh? 0.3 person live poverty. For us, every 60 times, 2.3 persons enter poverty. And you are telling me that it's nature? Now, look at Ethiopia. Ethiopia was among those five bad cases. Only 8% of Ethiopians are in poverty today. Ethiopia had a population of 118 million people as of two days ago, but for every minute, 0.7 persons in Ethiopia live poverty. The only countries that are putting more people into poverty are who? Nigeria and Congo DRC. 
So if you say Indians are Indians, they are more intelligent than us. Well, I don't think they are more intelligent than us. What of Ethiopians? Look at Bangladesh. Bangladesh was one of the bad cases in the world. Today, only 5% of Bangladesh, they have reduced their poverty level to 8.6 million people, from close to 80 million. Every minute that passes, 3.6 persons in Bangladesh leave poverty. I've included Angola here so that, why I included Angola so that you know it is not a matter of, I was speaking with somebody yesterday, he said Nigeria is a very rich country, it's only we have leaders say we're a very poor country. Countries are not rich because they have natural resources. Countries are rich because you people seated here are, have skills and are creating wealth. And I said to the person, what is our crude oil production? Crude oil production per capita is one of the lowest in the world among the oil producing countries. So we are not rich, but we have the capacity to create wealth through all of you. If we create an environment and we motivate it strong enough like banks are done so that you can realize yourself, we must create an environment and then give you the opportunity to realize yourselves. So as I gradually went uh, down my presentation, how countries can have, that's, uh, how countries have reduced poverty and arrested economic decline? Because that must come first. The environment must be right. And then, what do you need to do as individuals? One, improve food security uh, through the improvement on, in agricultural productivity. What is one of the reasons why we are going pushing more people into poverty is because food production has collapsed. One of the things other countries have done is to make sure that every average household can feed themselves at lowest possible cost. We have the arable land. We have massive land but people cannot even go and produce in some states. Is it an accident that people are collecting taxes from farmers in places like Zafra State? Is it an accident? Is it not nature? It wasn't there 10 years ago, was it? And if we do nothing, it will get to Abuja. As I was driving this morning, I took a 6.30 flight. I got to, the, because one of my directors is going back to Kano, from Kano State. So we spoke. He said, okay, when we get to um, National Hospital, we should drive in there, say, a pharmacy opposite that short road into. So we got there, we parked. He was already parked there. So when I got there, he came out, joined me in my camp. We told us to talk briefly. And he said, we call ourselves Chia. He said, Chia, you know, I won't, he lives around that area. He said, I won't be here in the evening, no. This place is not safe. And we're talking of like 8.20 this morning. He said, this place is not safe. I said, where? In Abuja? He said, it's not safe for National Hospital. So if you think what's happening uh, in Zamfara is too far from you, if we do nothing, it will get to you. So if we have security, we're going to have food production. If we have food production, food inflation will come down below 23%. If food inflation comes down below 23%, your income will buy more than also, and your standard of living will improve. Your, the fact that your income can buy more means your weight has increased. So countries have used this. Ethiopia used it. Bangladesh used it. China used it. India used it. Why are we the opposite? Transport infrastructure. Transport infrastructure gives you access to the market. My village, by the grace of God, I, was, I contributed to make sure they have modern road. The village people immediately the road was built, people from other towns come to the village to buy their food items. And they could sell their food items at higher prices than they used to do. So infrastructure, transport infrastructure is very critical to at, uh, access to the market. I came back from California two weeks ago. When I drive around California, I shake my head. I say, Kai, are we cost? Have we cost? I mean, it's not, no NJ came down from heaven to build these roads. Zan also. So why can't we do the same thing? Okay, then energy supply, we talked about the energy supply. We witnessed it here. They've taken light twice. We have to be, uh, Dave, Nancy, and all of you, we have to go and beg. Nancy, no be so. 
It shouldn't be. Elsewhere, they don't even know they take light. There are people who have lived 70 years in some countries in the world, they've never seen light blink. Communication infrastructure. Today, if you go to any Western country, every public space has broadband internet service. No be so. But here, you are there, but there's no broadband internet. As way, this building, you will connect to their broadband internet free. Because the public building. Because communication is a critical infrastructure today that countries are saying, look, as part of providing power and providing road and providing security, we'll also provide you communication backbone. Access to health care. I don't have to emphasize that. If you're not healthy, you can't be productive. There's what they call basic health care. In England, if you're at age of 65, you become a senior citizen. You don't have to pay for medical care. And that obtains to most countries in the world. Even at your age, you have some health insurance. Basic health issues are taken up off you. Quality of education. Quality or an availability of education. They tell you that when you educate a country, you create a prosperous society. Because an educated person is more creative, is more open to accept innovation or changes, has more competencies, and can also think laterally. But today, we have the highest number of out-of-school children in the world. Is it an accident? Clean water, clean, uh, 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 clean water and sanitation. I don't know, I don't live in Abuja, I don't know whether your taps walk, run, but I know in Lagos, there's no place where the public tap runs. In the 70s and 80s when we were growing up, even in Naba, we had tap bomb water, tap water in our houses. So are we progressing or retrogressing? How can it be in today's world you don't have tap water in, in major towns. Everybody has to dig a borehole. And you think it's an accident? Broad-based economic growth and job creation opportunities. I've talked about the cement industry. I've talked about the technical creation. We can, we have what we call proof of concept. We can replicate that in several sectors where we have competitive advantage. But it has to come from policies. So if we sit down and think these things just happen, they don't just happen. Targeted support to the poor of what most vulnerable. You have subsidized housing. I'm sure if you have a relation in England, they talk of council, council flats, that also. Eh? Because they make sure that nobody sleeps on the street. One of the things that China, the China said they have achieved a zero level of poverty. China is the most populated country in the world. One of the, the things they used was housing for the most vulnerable. In fact, in China, they had to evacuate people who live in very difficult locations and move them to create new towns for them with houses. Free or subsidized medical care, I've talked about the aged ones. Um, free basic education. We said we, have, we have free basic education to uh, JS3. So I don't know how effective that is, is. But we know, I'm aware that since the lover's day, the love we got for those of who have children in the university is that children have to come back and stay with us from February 14th to this day. <laughs> Conditional cash transfer and skill acquisition. The more skills you have, even if as a mason, a painter, the likelihood that you will not go hungry. Is that not so? And finally, what do you need to do as individuals? So we talked about what the society has to do. And for the society to do it, we have a contributory role to make sure the society do it. And that contributory role would be that we must put people who have the competence to govern us effectively well in power.
So, what do you have to do? Because that's what you came here to hear. But I needed to give you that the environmental factor affects what you achieve. Is that not so? So, but what did it do? Multiple income, family income. The era of my wife can work and want her to be happy. If you keep a wife in the house and she's not working, you are making her unhappy. So, if I am on minimum wage, 10,000 naira, and my wife is on minimum wage, 10,000 naira, my income has become what? 60,000. If it is only me earning income, we will be struggling more because when I come, my wife says, I want to do my hair. I say, you did your hair last month now. <laughs> so you need multiple family income. Possibly. And when I say the, the both husband and wife should work, it doesn't necessarily mean you have to work in the general sport promotion council. One could be working here, one could be selling, selling the day market. Is that not so? Two, small family size. The more number of children you have, the more difficult it is to give them the best in terms of quality education, quality attention, proper grooming. Do you understand what I'm saying? So even if you have so much money, like some people say they have so much money and they can, they can father so many children, what of the attention and the grooming they require? But the smaller the size of your family, the more where do you get? Because even if you are earning 100,000, the way they arrive, to arrive at the poverty is that they will divide the 100,000 by the number of children you have, family you have. So if you have a family of six, it's 100,000 divided by six. If it's a family of four, it's 100,000 divided by four. Because that's also how much you can provide for that number of family members. So second factor, if you are still in your productive age, it is no longer a thing of pride that I have 10 children. It used to be when it was insurance for old age. But if you don't are poor, all of you will die young. Third factor, you need to develop a secondary income. Secondary income is because you are working. So your secondary income, you, at your corner of your house, you have a poultry. You have a green hunt farm, a, green, a greenhouse farm. Something else that generates some level of income. You have a barbing saloon that you have employed two boys to be barbing for. You have a hairdressing saloon at the side. Saturday like this, you're not doing it till you go and see that your head is alone. They are making hair for people, you are collecting money. So you need to look for secondary income. Fourth factor, you need to have investment income. And that's what we do. My colleagues are all here. And to have an investment income, you must have the discipline to save. It doesn't matter how much you save. If it's one naira, save it as a matter of discipline. Invest it somewhere. So that it's either you get dividend income, that one you don't sweat to get the dividend income, is that not so? Or you have interest at the end of the month, you don't have to sweat to get in that from the, at the end of the month. So you must have investment income. If you have worked for one year, you don't have any sort of investment income, something is wrong. And finally, you must prioritize your expenditure. You must determine what is critical and important and what is necessary but not important. You really can't. And I tell you, look, theft will never go out of business. You know that it's called stinginess. It will never go out of business for successful business people. Has anybody ever heard Dangote organize a party? <laughs> Has anybody attended Jimovia's party or Tony Limelu's party or Absamar Rabio's party? If you have attended, please raise your hand up. So why is it that the poor people are the ones doing party, closing the road? <laughs> I always say, when I was a banker, when I was in charge of risk management, I said, I made it a personal policy when I had the power to approve and decline loans that anybody I give a loan and the person appeared on city people, I would call the loan. When you hear, Lagos be boy, it doesn't exist. Tell me the day Tony Limin has called, uh, what do you call the Bugatti man? What do you call the musician? 
Kizane, when has he invited him to come and play for him? You see a man whose total income is 10 million naira. He calls Bugao. And then he will spend 5 million. Anyway, I don't have time. So, not for lack of content, but for lack of time. So, finally, nature or nurture, no individual or country was created to be poor. Did you hear me well? No individual or country was created to be poor. Why? But note that not too many good things occur by default. Not too many good things occur by default. Good things occur by design. And finally, our station in life is a product of our cumulative past decisions as individuals, corporate, or nation. Thank you all.